Okay, my friends, extremely disappointing news. CERN is trying to steal our 2P2H particles, which uh, they're calling a tetraquark. Well, it's really a photon. And here's what it consists of. Two heavy quarks and two light antiquarks. Remember, two and two. Quarks are the fundamental building blocks from which matter is constructed. We showed this years ago. They have denied this ever since, and now they're trying to steal our discovery. They're showing some artist rendition. This is not a doodle. This is something that was real. That's a green photon, and here's how they manifest themselves. This is a red elect uh, photon, and they come in, not any descript photon. And then all of a sudden, as they stack up before they hit the Venturi, they display as this tetra quark. Two heavies and two lights. The white ones are extremely light and can squish through the Venturi. The black ones are like bowling balls. Now let's see it in its totality. This should not be, this, this can't stand. They can't say they discovered this. We discovered this years ago. What they can say is they discovered the multi-billion dollar quarks. These are like pennies apiece. They have the multi-billion dollar quarks, yes. I think they've got like six of them or something. <laughs> This one picture changes everything you will ever know about physics. Light is a wave, but it is also a particle. The particle has a magnetic field, just like any other magnet. So it creates a field around it. The field is the wave. The particle is the particle. Now, we have accelerated light. Nobody allows that. Hubble's constant is co totally collapsed because of light being able to accelerate and slow down. That's not working. Einstein was wrong. You can accelerate light. Light is a particle and it is a wave of magnetic field effect. It accelerates, it compresses, it glows, it explodes, it fissions, and it fuses back together here. Now, also it demonstrates gravity. How could I demonstrate gravity just by this? Because together these particles were together. Now that black one is pulling like crazy to get these white ones back. The white ones do not want to be next to each other. That's why there's such an explosion here. They say, get out of my way, you get out of my way, you get out of my way. And they set up these interference patterns. Those are not flappy waves. This is a single slit. Virtually everything you've been told about physics is wrong. This is that four-way particle right here. And then we turn it into sterile neutrinos, which is the new black muon, which is a sterile neutrino, and the white showers. And then gravity takes over. The black one is the gravity, and they pull back together here and turn back into light. Okay, my friends, get ready. Hold on to your hats. We are going to go nuclear. Charm quarks offer clues to confinement. Office of Science, Nuclear Physics, Energy.gov. Let's see what we got to say about this. Okay, my friends, this is an artist's conception of what they, this tetraquark would look like. They just discovered. Well, I show the real thing, and say today the LHCB experiment at CERN is presenting a new discovery uh, at this conference on high-energy particles. The new particle discovered by LHCB labeled as the tetraquark, an exotic hadron containing two quarks and two antiquarks. Yeah, that's exactly what I can show, if you want to call them quarks. It is the longest-lived exotic matter particle ever discovered and the first to contain two heavy quarks and two light antiquarks, exactly what I show. Okay, this was taken with um, a red pulsed laser using a cell phone, smartphone, to take these pictures. And it's, don't tell me it can't be done. No question whatsoever can be done with a smartphone. These are extremely high energy particles. And these CMOS phones pick them up. Since 2014 they've known that. They can use them for cosmic ray detectors, which are nothing more than highly excited radiant particles. We're not taking a snapshot of a photon of light. We're taking a snapshot of it exploding. This is like a nuclear bomb going off. You can't see a nuclear bomb from two miles away until it explodes and then you can't miss it. Identical situation. Now, what are we seeing? We're seeing that tetraquark. The two P's, which are the particles, and the two H's, which are the holes. I think they call them something different now. Uh, whatever they do. 
But this is this is dark matter, and it is also gravity. It will not concuss. Well, it concusses, and it concusses hard. It's like a bowling ball. It will not crush. It will not absorb anything. It will not emit anything. It will not reflect anything. It's dark matter, but it is heavy as hell. That's why they say there's two heavy particles and two very light particles. Exactly what they are. Now this one here. This is the particle. Now, what is it doing? It's just sitting there. No, it's not. It's traveling through the air. Why do I know that? Because that is taken, and I will show you the acceleration of it. And then this is the actual particle in its energetic values. You see this? It just looks two blacks, two whites. No, not the case. There's two blacks that have no change whatsoever, ever, ever, ever. Those are dark matter. They are heavy. They're much, much, much heavier than the white particles. And in a nuclear bomb, you can see it's extremely obvious. The white particles come out first, and they just burn things. And then about a, half a second later, the black ones hit, poof, everything goes. And then everything wants to come back because the dark core says, hey, come back here. You guys shouldn't have left. And they all start kind of come back showing it extremely in detail and um, everything I'm showing proves the electron flood theory and that everything is consisted of that everything consisted of those two particles right there that's an electron to us that was always an electron but we never saw that part before okay this is a shot showing the particle same definition of the particle the green and the red are identical you can see the red has very little value compared to the green you see the brilliance of the green this is coming through the same venturi slit at the same time one on top of the other the green just pushes the red out of the way and it creates vortex tornadoes you see these it's forcing the, the green particles to spin because it's pushing back hard, so hard against them that it, it rolls them like a bowling ball out of the way. And here it reconcusses out here. Now this is a little less... Uh, what we got here? Well, this is just green coming through. We can see it's all the same particles as we have in the red. Um, this one here is a little closer shot to the tornadoes. You see them? And they have just found these, too. They say, well, we just found some light tornadoes. Well, there they are. All right. This is the concussion and the progression of the concussion. The particles are coming in from this side, pulse, pulse, pulse. They're, they stack up here. At first, they don't have any real good definition. First of all, you don't even really see them other than it's just a, like a reddish wave coming. Then they start to separate and show themselves as the actual particle. Then the particle starts to box up. And then it really boxes up and it flares out on both sides. And then at the venturi, it just falls apart because the black cannot get through that venturi. And the same, we did the same thing with the green. We separated the green with the black from the white but not the way we did with the red rod warren did this and he got just he just got extremely lucky to be perfectly honest with you and when i saw it i got extremely lucky all right just so we don't miss anything at all here this is just normal pulse red laser the reason these are glowing is because the field effect it precedes the wave really it's just like a jet fighter coming through and everything has to concuss and get out of its way same thing with this the particle though is back here and that is the particle i've shown you now it accelerates yes it during this phase here it's seen as this particle and this blue shows that we can slow light down you can see it's sped up here and it's slowing down here so we know we can slow it down we know we can speed it up. These are the Higgs fields that they've been looking for forever. Now this is the particle, and this I don't know what to say about. This is a particle that came through, I believe, backwards, spinning in reverse, and caused this effect. This is beyond subatomic anything. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's transitioning between an antiparticle and a particle, it looks like to me. When I say an antiparticle and a particle, I mean it's transferring between spinning backwards to spinning forward. And is this spinning plate driving it to spin and forcing it to twist it backwards? I don't know. I have no idea. But this is the only time I've ever seen this. And I think I, I saw the source of it. 
All right, here's my take on this. We are looking into the Venturi, not too far away from it. And the Venturi comes out here, and you see that little spit of white? Remember how there was a white section right after the Venturi? That's it. And then we started to see the black balls start to show up. That's these. They hit the black balls, and then they start to spin together and create all this. This one here, I think, spun backwards. You see, it's, it's, it's glowing like it's, instead of radiating out, it's sucking itself in. I think that's the case. But these spits of white, I believe, are raw electrons, just absolutely raw electrons, until they concuss with the dark matter that is in the air. Let me show you the transition. Remember, white spritting out here and then all of a sudden the black balls show up. We see them as these spinning plates are called Higgs. Alright, let's go through the whole thing one last time. Pulsed red laser. Stacking up the particles, displaying themselves as that little box. Then the black separates from the white. The white is only allowed because it's so small and it compressed and get through the venturi. The blacks can't go through. They go around and the white ones immediately pick up the black ones again because it, they, the black one is gravity. So we have fission, we have raw electrons, we have fusion. So And fusion is nothing more than gravity, basically. In here is that white spray I showed you. I said, there's nothing there. Remember, we said, we're looking into the venturi and there's nothing but these little white spikes coming out and then all of a sudden we see these, these disks start to show up. That's the Higgs fields. And that's when they start to recombine with the black dark matter. Now, I, I showed you the green had the same exact architecture. These are the black spots. You see all these little black dots all everywhere. There's no black here whatsoever. Not a tiny taste of black. This Venturi is not set exactly like the red one was, where they sprayed out just exactly equal. This is offset, so what it's doing, I think it's, it's bouncing a secondary off of this pin and directing everything this way other than the most extreme particles, which are these. And that's why these big fields and all of it, see this concussion here, you see all those little waves? It's just incredible what Rod has captured, literally by accident. And we want to see somebody look into this. And I believe this is a, like, first of all, the Venturi is not set equal side by side, one step back from the other, I believe. You know, that's quite exaggerated, obviously. However, I also believe it might be splayed exaggerated that way, see, because these are pins. They go right like this. And you shoot the light through it this way. And then you see all this spray come out. And this one allowed the black to come through with it. The other one, Rods did not allow this. I think the black is coming through there with it, but still scrambled up. I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest with you. This, this black may be reorganizing right from here, because this is so extremely powerful. It may reattach instantly. I have no idea. This needs to be looked at. But you can see there's so much so much energetic reactions here it's just phenomenal there's fields there's there's higgs there's dark matter there's these brilliant field effect pulsations it's just phenomenal the amount of of information it's within this one little picture okay i think i've shown a pretty good case for the fact that we discovered that the that four tetraquark they're talking about is nothing more than a muon and an electron neutrino back to back a pair of them which makes a photon which I showed you both green and red and they explode at the venturi which I showed you and the black ball which I'm showing you now and I showed you before separates from the white so they end up with a muon which is a black ball which is dark matter which is gravity and it is heavier than hell and it would one last thing it, it, it does not it does not emit, it does not absorb, it does not reflect. That's the definition of black dark matter. Well, I have one thing to add. It will not compress, and it is heavy. 
much, much, much heavier than a white. The white is almost nothing. And it's exactly what they are talking about for these tetra quarks. So I believe I've shown fission, fusion, raw energy. I mean, it just seems to be working for me. <laughs> I don't know about you.